Conrad Santa, living in a changing world with the changing people with the changing times. I'm presenting the uncompromising gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations of the world. And I'm here at Her River. That's the Her River behind me. I'm on the shore of the Her River here, I'm just squatting around here. But I just wanted to talk to you, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk to you about stuff that I've gone through and how much are you willing to endure? If you can endure things, God will bless you. No matter what is happening, I want you to stay with God. Never lose heart. Never get discouraged. Never get frustrated. Never get disappointed. Never get discombobulated because God is with you. Now, over the years, I've gone through quite a number of things. I know what it is when somebody comes and you're sitting with your family at home and you hear a knock on the door and it's the man from the electric company that come and turn off your lights. I know what it means when somebody comes and then turn off your gas so it's God in the house. I know what it is. I remember many years ago, I had a vehicle that I got. It was a big van. When we lived in the city of uh, Toronto at that time and we were supposed to be traveling to go to another city to preach that I think we're supposed to be traveling from Montreal uh, from Toronto to Montreal and my wife Maureen was at school with the kid with the kids and then because she used to do like volunteer uh, supervising at the school so we packed that when they come from school then we'll be going and while we we're waiting at home and all of a sudden I heard a knock on the door and it was like two gentlemen that came were all wearing bomber jackets and it was a little scary though when they came, the first thing, he didn't even say hi to me, he just says, are you Mr. Santa? I said, yes, sir. He says, you got two choices. Either you give us your keys or we call the police. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, the reason why it's being because we're going through financial situation at that time and then uh, the sticker for the registration was expired and I missed two payments for the car. So they came and as they tied it up to this uh, towing truck and they towed the car away and as I was sitting there looking at that vehicle as it being stowed away and I could hear the voice of that enemy, the devil saying, if you are a child of God, where is God when you need him? You say God will provide, you pray all the time, you preach that God will provide all your needs, but what's going on with your needs? Look at this now, the car is being towed away and you can't even go to the other city now. Now you prayed and God is not answering your prayer. It was so discouraging and I know many of you, if you know what I'm talking about, if you've been in a situation like that, I didn't know what to do. I'm sitting there, so what I did, I reached out in my pocket and I took the keys and I gave it to the gentleman and they went and they took the car, put it on a tow truck, they went to the repo depot. About two days, three days passed, nothing was going on and I'm praying and I could hear the voice of the devil saying, if your God cares so much, where is he when you need him? And I know many of you have been in that situation, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm sitting there, I like to go and pray in the woods actually, I like to go in the bush to pray most of the time, so because I was so discouraged and I went to the bush just to pray. And after prayer, praying for a while, then I came back, then I heard the phone rang, it was one of the friends that I made, he's an evangelist, he's one of the friends that I made in the woods as I was praying. And he says, Conrad, how are you? I said, sir, I'm not good. Now, many of you lie when things are so hard. They ask you, how are you doing? You say, fine. That's why you don't get blessed. If things are not going good, just say things are not going good. 
So I said, I don't know, things are not going good. He says, what's going on? I said, listen, they towed the car away. I'm like, okay. So then he says, all right, Conrad, I'm coming to where you are. I'm like, okay, it's all right. You don't even need to come anywhere. He says, no, I'm coming. So he started to laugh on the phone and then he drove from his house. Then he came to where I was. So he says, so what happened to the man of God? You know, it's very easy to preach to others. It's very easy, very hard sometimes to leave what we preach. So that's why we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to teach us how to practice what we teach and teach what we practice. So to walk the talk and talk the talk and walk the talk, not only talk the talk without walking the talk. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help you to walk the talk. So he said, Conrad, where is your car? I said, you know, I don't even want to talk about it because they took it to a place called the Ripple Depot where the car, when they possess, they repossess the vehicle, then they take it to the Ripple Depot. So they took it there. So he said, you want us to go there? I said, no, no, I don't even want to go there. He says, come on, man, let's go there. I'm like, okay, finally I accepted. So we went down there. And when we got down there, we found a mean lady. She was so mean. She was sitting on the counter there. And uh, he talked. He says, uh, did you get uh, uh, Conrad Santos vehicle? It's a Ford uh, Freestar. They say, yeah, it's over there. The guy didn't pay. The guy this and that. You know, feeling so discouraged when you are a child of God, when you pray, when you want God to answer the prayer at that particular moment, but God does not answer it there because God has his own way of answering prayers. So as we were sitting there at the counter, then he took a credit card. He asked the man, he says, how much? The lady actually, he says, how much does uh, Mr. Santa owe you? They say it's $3,000. He took his card and slapped it on the table. He says, give him his car. Here's your money. So the lady took hesitatingly, she reached out and took the credit card and they paid for me and they brought the car back and again it says, Brother Conrad, drive your car home. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying this to tell you that no matter what is happening in your life, God has a way of doing things. I didn't even know this evangelist so well. I'd known him for about, um, I think about a month or so and he came and paid $3,000 for me to get the vehicle to go back home. Usually I don't make donuts, but that day I decided, I said, devil, look, you thought you won, but God has his own way. And I made, I made a donut, I skidded, and then I drove off and I went home. And I want to thank God for that. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to say that in life, life is a journey. And every one of us is going somewhere, but very few get up somewhere. But in this journey, you're going to have troubles. God did not promise that the skies will always be blue. Right now, there's, it was blue this morning, but now there's a lot of clouds around here. That means even in life, it's not going to be easy. Sometimes it's going to be so hard in life. But guess what? You have to stick it out. People that endure are the people that get whatever they're praying for from God. So that happened. Another time again, I think, uh, because we, we were going through a lot of financial situation, financial trouble. Of course, that's not something strange. A lot of us go through financial troubles. And I remember they shut down the gas and it's cold. You know, it's minus 40. Actually, no, no, no. I think it was cold time. It was just about springtime because when it's, uh, it's winter time, they don't. They have that law that can keep it on. Uh, just to keep you warm for a while. So it was around springtime and the shut off, I owed the, uh, the gas company about $500. So I'm thinking, I don't know what to do. I'm just praying, God, where are you? You know, when you feel so discouraged, when you pray, when you go to church, and then you go to the store, you see people getting stuff that they don't even need to stick it up there on their on the cart and you say, you know, I don't need all this. All I need is just a can of milk and stuff like that. So getting discouraged. So now what happened? They shut off my gas and I'm thinking, God, I prayed and I prayed. And then I went to the school, taking the kids to the school, just dropping them. As I was dropping them with Maureen and uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the principal of the school called me, says, Mr. Santa, can you come to the office? I'm like, oh, now what, uh, what next? What did I do again? When they called me, I went there and I said, he said, Mr. Santa, I know that your gas has been turned off. Your wife told us and uh, here is your payment. They gave me $500 and I went and I paid again for that. 
Now I'm just trying to tell you that no matter what you go through, brothers and sisters, God makes a way. It might not be the way you want it. It is God's way. God, He does things that you do not understand, you don't know. But the only thing, the only mistake that we make, most of us, is because we give up. Most of us, we get discouraged. Most of us, we don't want to pray. We begin to grumble and complain. And we think that God does not answer our prayers. But guess what? God always answers prayers. The Bible says, when you call upon me in the time of trouble, I will answer you. So God, call upon Him. I don't know what you're going through right now, but I want you to know that when you call upon God, God is going to answer you. Don't get discouraged. So many things have happened to us. Sometimes I've driven the car when I didn't even have enough gas. You know, I think at one time we were driving, no gas, it just ran out of gas. And then you pray, God, the Bible says you shall supply all needs according to your riches and glory. What is happening? Well, some things that happen in our lives is because God is building our character. Sometimes these things happen for God to taste us. How much do you love God? Do you love God because you have a lot of money? Do you love God because things are going good guess what we are to be with God whether things are good or whether things are bad God is still the same just because I don't have anything it doesn't matter that it doesn't mean that God has stopped to be a provider just because you are sick and you haven't gotten your healing yet it doesn't mean that God is not the healer God is still the healer don't let the circumstances determine your love for God because God is God sometimes you're going through a taste and you do not know it I've always taught people that God is the only professor that gives you a thirst, a taste, without telling you that you're going through a test. It's like, it's different. Like when you go to school, in schools, people will tell you, you know what, sir, you know, uh, pupils tomorrow, students tomorrow, you're going to be writing an exam, or maybe next week, you're going to be writing an exam, study chapter three, chapter four, chapter five. But it's not like that with God. God just puts you through a test. When God was tasting Moses that time, when he told him to go and sacrifice his son on top of the mountains there, God just says, I want you to go and sacrifice your Isaac. And for three days, God did not talk to him until the time when he got to Mount Moriah on top of the mountain, when he took off the knife, just about to plunge into the sand there. And then God says, Moses, Moses. Of course, God told him, look on the other side, there's a, a round caught in the thicket. And then he did that. It was a test that God made him to go through. Many of us today will go through a test. As a child of God, God's going to allow certain circumstances that are insurmountable to you that you're going to have to go through. Now, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to follow God or you're going to get discouraged or you're going to go back to Egypt, just like the children of Israel. When they came to the brinks of the river there, I mean, when they came to the brinks of uh, the Red Sea, many of them were saying it was better if we had died there. It was better for us to be slaves than to be here. Are you also regretting to praise God? because of the circumstances that you're going through. Remember, our God is a specialist in the impossibles. No matter how things are, God is with you. Many years ago, I was invited to go and speak somewhere up in the north. And I lived in Toronto at that time. Didn't have anything, no money. I imagine after flying in an airplane and you come back because you have no money for a cub and they didn't give me anything they didn't pay me or anything you know how you give an alarm sometimes to people but i don't know i was saying god what is happening i tried to give an hint to this man is just looking at me and uh, so i came for after preaching there i came back home when i came back home i was at the airport in toronto we lived about almost 15 minutes now 15 minutes by road it's a little bit long by driving it's closer but then dry, uh, walking was a little far and I know a lot, a lot of you who've been to Toronto, you know how the airport is made. You can't just come out walking there. You have to come out, like if you have your car parked somewhere, then you can drive. So after preaching, then I came, I didn't have any money. I'm thinking that I'm sitting, what do I do? Guess what? With my bags from flying to walk one, two, I walked all the way home with my suitcase. When I got home, my wife was asking me, what's going on? You know, I pretended like I had the car parked there. I walked and followed the car until I got outside. And I'm like, God, what is happening? I thought when I save you with everything, you see me through everything. But guess what? Some of those are tests that you go through as a child of God. 
I, I look back and I remember now the way I am if somebody was to come if somebody's in need of course I know and I know you don't even have to tell me I'll look at you and I know because I've been there sometimes God makes us to go through these things so that we can help others I've been through many situations I've been through the fire talk about it I've been through the fire I've been through the water talk about stuff that I've gone through sometimes I said God please God let this pass God please but you know what above all I've made my decision my decisions that I've made is this like Joshua Joshua said as for me and my family shall serve the Lord so no matter what even though if I have to live on uh, bread and water to preach the gospel I will do it I will never give up on God He's brought me this far by his grace and mercy and I'm not gonna give up again it doesn't matter the Bible says that all things work together for good to those that love him whether I have it or I don't have it it doesn't change who God is so sometimes God will let you go through that but it's just a test and I remember not long ago my mom had passed on about a couple of years ago she passed on and I didn't have anything I'm thinking God how is this gonna happen but God made a way for me I had enough money to fly over to Africa and go and bury my mom and gave her a nice funeral there but it was all by miracles when she passed on they told me mama is sick my sister told me mama is sick it doesn't look like she's gonna make it I said okay I'm gonna come but even though I was saying I'm coming I didn't have anything she dies it took about eight days when uh, she died for about eight days she was still in the morgue and I didn't know what to do I was walking one time that's why it's good to communicate with God I got so discouraged and I went in Edmonton right there in the city of Edmonton for those of you that know where Randall Park is I started to walk in Randall Park and I'm just praying I said God how am I gonna do this because I have nobody there it's only my sister and I the two of us so what do I do so as I was walking and I prayed and as I was praying then I heard the voice of the Lord God gave me a scripture it says commit all your plans to the Lord and all that you've committed to the Lord this shall be established I think it was from the book of Proverbs so I believe God and he just told me I just knew I just knew that knew that I knew that everything would be okay and I felt so good and I just knew I don't know I didn't see anything nobody called me nobody gave me money but I just knew and I knew that everything is gonna be okay it didn't take long my passport was expired that time I had to renew the passport I had to get a plane ticket was cost me about three thousand five hundred because it was short notice to the air traveling agent and I called the funeral home there and then everything worked out so good anyway and we gave mom a good funeral and then when I got there everybody of course is looking at you as you know you're coming from here so you have to do everything what do you do and I'm looking to God and I felt like Moses when everybody was looking at Moses and now Moses was looking at God I'm like God I don't know what to do then we had to hire the buses there to take the people for the funeral and then the pastor was supposed to be at the funeral did not show up thank God I used to have a friend pastor who came and he did the funeral for mama his name is uh, pastor Bronson Bronson God bless you and he came but everything went well even though you go through the fire with all those I can decide to be bitter or I can decide just to praise God guess what I've decided no matter what happens to me because my life is not my own my life is God's and everything that happens to me it's up to God I know God uh, puts us in situations he allows them to happen to us but we determine how we go through it or we can determine you can determine to start going through situations you know by grumbling and complaining but in everything I've learned one thing to praise God in the midst of my trouble in the midst of all things in the midst of hardship sometimes even friends that you've hired friends that we trusted people that we trusted people you think that they'll be there for you in the time of need but they're no longer there they look at you they've marginalized you they give you a name according to the situation if they see you coming they say there goes the guy with financial trouble there goes the guy with the sickness there goes the guy with the disease whatever your situation is they call you by that situation but guess what it doesn't matter what don't be bitter at the people Pray to God. Be like Hannah. Pray.
prayed, who prayed and prayed and prayed until God gave him a son who became a prophet of God and very anointed. Even if God's going to change your situation, no matter how it is, remember, no condition is permanent. And don't make a permanent decision over temporal circumstance because God is about to do something for you. So just endure. Endure. Whatever you're going through, endurance is to outrun the devil. You know, let's see if right now, if we were jogging or running and running, you keep running and running and running and running, even though when others are giving up, don't give up because pretty soon you are about to enter into your destiny. Doors are about to open, doors that you've never seen open before, they're going to open. The only thing you need to do, brother or sister, don't get discouraged. Remember, call upon the name of the Lord and God's going to help you. So many things have happened over the years. You know, I've lost so many things. Uh, but above all, I just still praise God. I've chosen that it doesn't matter. I can go on telling you stuff that I've gone through, but I don't want to be complaining and grumbling. I'm here to tell you that no matter whatever it is in everything the Word of God says, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Remember, God will always, 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 always make a way for you. The Bible declares that many are the affliction for the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all, not some, but it says all of them, all of them. And you know, if you have friends, they've turned against you, people you believed and people you trusted, they give up on you, guess what? Because when God wants to do something in your life, He brings a man. When God wants to bless you, He brings a man. When I say a man, it can be a woman, it could be a man, they'll bring you bring people in your life. When the devil wants to destroy you too, he puts a man in your life. Guess what? Sometimes God will bring in people. Sometimes the enemy will try to bring in people that are going to take you away from where you're going. They'll tell you all this stuff, worldly stuff, and tell you how much God is, this does not work, how discombobulated you are, how foolish you are because you don't see the problem, you are in denial. Guess what? It's, a, it's an emissary of Satan to come and discourage you. But the thing is, don't give up. Don't give up. That's the biggest mistake a lot of us do. The thing is, we don't do, we don't pray consistently. We don't read the Word of God consistently. We don't believe consistently. We are not consistent in what we believe in God. If you can stay consistently trusting God, believing God, trusting His Word, praying every day, no matter what, whether things are good or things are bad, because as a child of God, circumstances that don't change who you are, you, you're not to be ruled by the circumstances around you. Guess what? What is inside you can change what is inside. A lot of us, we think change starts from the outside. When God asked Moses to create a tabernacle, he told him that make a tabernacle, but you are to start from the inside out. Have you ever seen a house that is being created from the inside out? Most of the time when they build a house, they build a house from the foundation then up. But Moses was taught create the tabernacle from the inside out, meaning change comes from the inside. When your inside has decided, when inside you, you've decided, you're believing, you're trusting God, you know that things are going to change and you know it. You don't walk in by what you're seeing, but trusting God, then God's going to change. That change inside will begin to change the outside. I'll give you an example. Many years ago, when we were pastoring in the city of Montreal, there was one, one young man, when he comes to church, oh boy, he looks so like a ruffian with his hair and all this stuff. He looks so weird. And uh, I told the people, he says, don't talk to the youth, leave them by themselves. Don't bother them and stuff because a lot of them would go and talk to them and discourage them. I just said, you know what, leave him by himself. God's going to touch his heart and he's going to change himself. Guess what? After about weeks and weeks or so, he came back. When he came, his hair was all spiffy and everything done nicely. And the guy was wearing a suit. And I said to him, who told you to come like this? He says, you know, just inside me, I just felt like this is wrong. Guess what? That was the Holy Spirit. Change starts from the inside out. You want to see the miracles? You want to see God work in your life? Don't look at the circumstances. Look at your heart first. When your heart decides, when you say, God, enough is enough. I'm 
live in your trust in you are not gonna give up, then the outside will start to change. Alright? So don't give up, brothers. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. No matter what, stay with God. When you stay with God, you are promised that God's gonna come through. But many of us, when we're going through these things, you know what happens? We give up on God. Some of us, we go to witch doctors, maybe because every time you're looking for a job, you know, they keep saying you're overqualified. Sometimes they tell you, no, sir, we can't get you. I think we've got somebody better than you. we got somebody else. And then you wonder, if you look at your qualification, look at the stuff that you have, you've got good stuff, but they're not picking you. Then you're thinking, God, why me? Why me? Guess what? You're not cursed. Just believe and trust God. Sometimes it could be a test that you're going through. But when you give up, you lose. Don't give up on God. Don't turn to go to witch doctors and warlocks and, and Luciferians and Satanists and all these things to try and get some paraphernalia so you can be like, so you can get a job, so you can have good luck. You don't need that. What you need in your life is God because God changes everything. So don't get discouraged. Put your faith in God and God's going to help you through. So remember that, trust in God. When you trust in God, things change. Sometimes we don't wait on God. We pray two minutes later, we say, give God a chance, let God work. Like he said that he will do all things. Remember that, always remember, God is not a man. God does not tell lies. The Bible says two immutable things. It is impossible for God to tell a lie. That means whatever God has spoken is gonna to come to pass. So just wait on God. He says, I'll, when God says, I'll come, you don't have to doubt because he's going to come anywhere. You just wait on him. You will see his manifestation. You will see his power. You will see his glory because when he promises, he fulfills his promises. Remember that God has exalted his word above his name and he's an unchanging God. So he will come through. So no matter what is happening in your life, please, people of God, don't give up. Trust in God.